The U.S. Navy is testing Starlink satellite internet on warships to provide reliable connectivity. So. What are the implications of this? It's a nice way of getting really fast internet, basically anywhere in the world right now. So it, it would make sense for them to look at it. So are they? They're using this on warships. So is this, you know, weapon systems and stuff, or what are they using it for? So no, not weapon systems. I think they're really looking at it for kind of general internet connectivity for those on board. So if they need to submit stuff to HR or potentially watch shows or maybe communicate with family or something, it's really for that sort of onboard internet traffic. Oh, that would be good for morale. Absolutely, yeah. Deployments are like six or seven months. You're away for a long time, so get Netflix. Get, exactly, getting Netflix. I think uh, connectivity. You're really at the mercy of picking up a SIM when you're in port or something. I mean, I think uh, it'd be huge to just get Starlink on the on the ships would be huge. So one thing I noticed that the satellite terminal they're using is called. The STTNG. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Star Trek: The Next Generation. Yeah. Right? Undeniably the best Star Trek series. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Back to Starlink. We're, we're not doing this again. So it said that it could connect to two satellites at the same time. Yeah. So I, I think normally how these things work is they'll come up with kind of a physical standard for what the terminal should be like and what it's you know what connections it has. And so they would probably, based on the size of the ship, sort of equip and say, okay, so this ship is big. It can take eight of these terminals, and you'd probably just want to partition it. So okay, this part of the ship uses this terminal. This part of the ship uses this terminal. So you could get a bunch of them in there and actually use you know multiple Starlinks or maybe not even Starlink, but something else. You know, the Inmarsat or whatever, some other satellite network, you could probably just plug in a terminal to use that too. Oh, so it supports multiple satellite links, but it's not bonding them together. I wouldn't think so. I think it would probably work either just by load balancing or really just partitioning and, and having different parts of the ship network connect up to different terminals. Right, right. That would make sense if you didn't have Speedify. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Certainly seems like an opportunity where they could do a lot better if they had real bonding. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Because these satellite terminals, when you're on a moving ship, they're they're gaining and losing connection all the time, and you can do much better than that, right? Definitely, definitely. So Starlink is run by Elon Musk, and I know there were concerns after some of the things that happened in Ukraine with him not authorizing it for combat missions. Are there concerns about the U.S. military using Starlink? I think the relationship there is a little bit different, and I, I think they'll be fine. I don't know that they would want to use it for sort of weapons communication stuff anyways, but uh, no, I think the situation's different. I think they'll have no problem. I mean, I, people talk about the security, can you trust it? But I mean, I assume you would VPN would everything so. over this. You wouldn't trust anybody. Exactly. <laughs> Nothing in particular about him. You would just VPN over it and have all of your traffic encrypted. So only... Exactly. I would, I would assume that every, every byte that gets sent over this is tunneled and encrypted and sort of pops out at some Navy server somewhere. Yeah, that sounds right. So with Starlink, which we think of as normally as a consumer internet service, starting to be used by the U.S. military, doesn't that make those satellites a target? Absolutely, yeah. So I think, yeah, in the event of, of a war starting, I think then it would push it more into something that somebody would want to kind of disable or, or take out that whole network. So how, definitely. How hard is it to shoot down it? I was going to say a satellite. But <laughs> Starlink's now 6,000 satellites. So it's pretty hard to shoot down a satellite, and it's really hard to shoot down 6,000 satellites. It's not, I think, really clear if that could really be done without making it really difficult to put up any sort of big constellation like that in its place. I think you would have so much junk in just a big disc. You know, oh, big. yeah. I mean, if you blew, <laughs> if you smashed 6,000 satellites into 500 pieces each, now we're talking about millions of pieces of trash. Right. And that said, I'm not sure how right you are about how hard it is to shoot down a satellite, right? I mean, it's not obvious, but the size of a rocket you need to shoot down a satellite is much, much smaller and cheaper than the size of the rocket you needed to put that satellite up, right? It takes more energy to keep the satellite going around than it took to get it up. Right. If you're shooting things down, you only need to get it up. Yeah, and I, I think you could have airplanes at very high altitude with a couple KEV lasers, and, and uh, yes, you could probably make pretty quick work of them with, with lasers on a very high altitude airplane, too. But... None of that's really easy. I, I was reading a Reddit <laughs> post about launching a rocket with a, a payload of gravel and just leave it in that orbit, <laughs> and the satellites will start disappearing. <laughs> I have no idea who this person is or whether they're right or wrong, but like, oh, oh, that's ugly. No, these satellites are very delicate, all right? Absolutely, yeah. Any Any little piece can just disable them in a weird way, and I think they're kind of engineered to 
live their life, and then once they're nearing the end, use whatever fuel they have remaining to just push themselves in towards Earth and burn up. And so anything that sort of disrupts that, all of a sudden you just get them spiraling somewhere weird and going to, you know, different different elevations from Earth, different, different distances from Earth, and yeah, you lose control of it. And it's the gravity yeah. scenario. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great movie, by the way. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't want to recreate what happened with that uh, Boeing and Telsat, right? I mean, there's a big internet outage in parts of Europe and Asia when this satellite exploded. I mean, last yeah. I saw, they were talking about tracking 500 pieces of it <laughs> whizzing around in space. Yep. Yeah, it just gets... Gets impossible to track, and so yeah, you don't want. <laughs> and I think they still don't know what to, what hit it or what made it explode. I, I assume something hit it, right? It seems that way. Yeah, it was yeah. a nine-year-old satellite that just suddenly was a pile of pieces. Yeah, could be could be space junk, could be a meteorite. Who knows? Probably never find out, right? <laughs> Old pieces will burn up on their way down. Exactly. Yep. So, do you know what the timeline is? When it, when is the Navy rolling this out? So I think the first units were installed February of 2023. So they've been out for a while, and they haven't disclosed how many ships have gotten these systems, but I think they're out there now. They can't be used for classified systems yet, but that right. is kind of got to enhance on the their security. schedule. Exactly. Got to enhance the security, so that's on their schedule. But it sounds like ships are already being equipped with this. That sounds awesome. If you're interested in more connectivity tech news like this, subscribe for more.